What's going on everybody? This is Afro Think Tank and today I'm coming to you as a pan-African uh, black YouTube fan, right? Because as a black pan-African pro-black YouTube fan, I got some questions for these pro-black people that have been on the internet for a very long time, you know, pumping out this pro-black pan-African effort, right? You know, and first I want to start off one of the OGs. Dr. Umar Johnson, right? Y'all have never really heard me speak on Dr. Umar Johnson ever, really. You know, but most black folks have spoke on Dr. Umar Johnson. I I agree with most of, almost all of what Dr. Umar Johnson has to say, right? I believe Dr. Umar Johnson is, in his own words, the prince of Pan-Africanism, right? I believe he's a necessary voice and he does contribute to the mental construction that we need to undertake as 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 black people, right? And I think that he has a lane when it comes to showing unapologetic, heterosexual, black pride and testosterone and ego. Like we need that, right? But as a as a observing Pan African subscriber and a fan of of Dr. Umar Johnson, I myself is wondering where the hell is this school, right? When is this school gonna open up? Now, a lot of people say it's a scam. A lot of people, you know, but a lot of people who say it's a scam, they don't know the first thing about opening up a school, right? That's the thing about it. And I understand uh, Dr. Umar Johnson's resolve is he wants to pay for everything himself, uh, you know, which is very hard to do, especially with his ideology. I don't see any institution uh, making any process smooth for him at all, right? So. You know, he's been working on this project for years. It's his pet project. So I don't judge him for not having it done per se, as it's, it's not like I, I put into it. So I'm like, all right, I'm a I'm an invested shareholder, so I'm putting into it, right? Now, as far as how he collects his money, you know, he's always available, he always speaks. You know, he's always doing something for his money, right? So I don't think he's a scammer per se. I, I believe that his strategy, to me, to me, his strategy is somewhat flawed, right? Because as the prince of Pan-Africanism, right? As someone who's clearly and highly intelligent, right? Strategically, if I was him, what I would have did, what I would have did, now he's his own man, what I would have did is I would have went to Africa, right? Where I know I can set up these institutions without having the uh, oppressor, you know, put their thumb, you know, on the scale. If I was him, I would have went to Nigeria, Ghana, some country in West Africa, Mr. Pet, Prince Pan Africa. That's what I would have did. I would have established my school over there, show proof of concept, right? Then with that, I would have used that as my advertisement, my show proof of concept that, hey, this is a uh, Frederick Douglass boy, school for boys. This is how I operated. This is the curriculum. This is what it looks like when I'm able to do it over here, I wanna bring this to America and to the black communities and do it there. And you would have a framework. That's what I would've did. Cause as far as I'm concerned with what I know from me being in Nigeria and building and doing what I'm doing, I know that if I had the intelligence of Dr. Umar Johnson and the resource he had, I would've had 10 schools in Nigeria right now on full display uh, uh, showing the power of, of black people controlling their educational system, period. Then I would have been able to talk all the trash I want, and I would have been able to brought my brought my, my school to to America to show and prove. Or I could have had some sort of remote or used used or some sort of remote feature to incorporate African Americans and and African American children into that all boys school. That's what I would have did. But he's going a different route. That's his project. But I'm I'm all I I'm my jury's out. until he says he's no longer doing it. Then then I'm not you know then my the jury's out. But I believe. He is a true Pan-African in all sense of the word. People don't like his personal stuff, but guess what? People judging his personal stuff do exactly the same personal shit in their own lives, right? It's just that they're not standing on stage, you know, being judged or, or, or speaking truth to power, right? So he who has no sin casts the first stone when it comes to that, all right? Then you got the other little smaller ones, right? Well, you got, um, you got um, Doc, uh, Tariq Nasheed, right? The former Pan-African who's kind of grifted his way into doing all sorts of things for his own personal gain. What has he contributed? He has made some DVDs that did open the eyes of some people. Now, was he really the author of these DVDs? Could, could anybody... Now, that DVD that you saw, Hidden Colors, 
Could a YouTuber make that video now? Yes. Tariq Nasheed was a YouTuber before YouTube, right? So he caught on to the wave. He was a C-list C -list celebrity trying to make, make his way up. Didn't quite get to the mountaintop, but he did get on some really high hills. Uh, he's found a few griffs within his network, but people like him. He, he's funny. The dude, he, he's, he reminds me of a 90s comic. He has a 90s style about him. You know, there's people who are interested in him. He has contributed to the conversation, even though he has, as of late, added to the xenophobia, even though he's he's not serious. That's the thing about it. I know he's not serious. He knows he's not. He's playing he's playing part to a demographic that are that are not as um He's playing to the demographic that could probably tell you all the stats of an NBA team and can t can probably read word for word every episode of Martin, line for line. Alright. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But outside of sports and comic comedic black entertainment and other little hip hop dramas, they're not interested in other things. He caters to that crowd, right? But what does he actually contribute to the black community? Nothing. He only contributes to himself. What about the B A B A I O, right? And I think we all started to hear that with Cali Genesis, right? Uh, a black Republican firebrand YouTuber who comes on YouTube talking that pro black nationalist stuff, right? You know, he's really just a hidden cons um, right wing uh, black nationalist American conservative who kind of likes to talk about Africa. He likes Africa. He would like to have the power of the white imperial white man, but he would like the black man to have it, right? He kind of, but he's more of a dick. He got a dictatorial. He's he wants to be like a dictator, right? You can tell his whole aura says, "I want to be a dictator. I'm in charge. I'm in control." And but the thing is with the BAIO. Like, I, I posted a video yesterday about it. He was a part of the BAIO, but he was, I don't, I don't wanna mess up with BAIO, so if you are familiar with BAIO, and I think I'm saying it right, please correct me and tell me what BAIO is in the comment section so people can know what that is. Because there is a real BAIO movement, right? Back to Africa, black nationhood. But Cali Genesis, who was once a part of this organization, has stolen the logo, stolen everything, and ran off and started doing his own thing, but he's, he really has nothing to do with the real BAIO, but him, like a lot of pseudo black nationalist, black pan African pro blacks, they pretend to be pan African and they steal other people's identities and other movements' identities to cater towards their own actual personal right wing nationalist white agenda. All right, for real, right? Then you so so he's like a white nationalist in disguise, uh, Cali Genesis. That's why you see who he congregates with. He congregates with people like. Pan African Strikes Back was also a Black American Strike Back national. He's a Pan American. He's a pro-white, pro-American, pro-capitalistic Pan African Strike Back via Brandon, aka Bucci Bear. Uh, you know, uh, you know, he is. Uh, he caters towards whiteness. He loves white America. He wants white America to feel safe. That even though he's a Pan African, but he's not any danger to them because he wants them to feel comfortable. That's a part of that um, that white conservative Republican. They they basically sold out to the greater culture of race, race pride, race black first, and they've capitulated to the national net the national identity of America, and they look, view as America as their prim, primary identifier as black people, and they figure if they just be as American, if they could be more and more and more and more American, maybe white people will accept them one day and give them respect at the table that's their hope that's their that's their calculus but in history it's never happened right so you got brandon right what does he tell he talks about his um oap right but for all the years of oap that he bought 100 acres left and on what i know as a keep talking i'm talking from a subscriber now from what i know as a builder in africa you know and i'm in nigeria he's in kenya i know that the price differences are not going to be that too far off right so I know if a person has the financial capability of of buying a hundred acres of land, right? Personally, they have the money to also uh, also um, do something with that land, right? So if you buy a hundred acres of land, you or a group, you guys should be buying that with intentions on doing something with it. Because I remember there was a video where Brandon said he actually kicked people who were living on his land, the land he purchased, supposedly. The land he purchased in Kenya, he kicked people off who were living on the land. So there were people from Kenya who were living on that land, and he, as an African American and his group, kicked off people who were living on that land so that they can purchase that land, 
right? But yet still hasn't done anything with the land they kicked those people off of for, right? That is a colonizing action. Because if you're gonna buy 100 acres of land, you need to develop it or you're wasting time. It's just a, I look good project. Ooh, I got land project. What are you doing with the land? I remember in some videos he was supposed to be going to Kenya to build a, um, to build a, uh, a security shack. I happen to know that security shack shouldn't cost that much to build. You're talking about some concrete, some sand. So where is the security shack? What is happening on the, uh, the, the, uh, the land in Kenya? What has been developed? What happened to the orange field? Where's the development of the orange field? So if you're gonna be a Pan-African and you're gonna scrutinize people for not, when you say, what have you done? When you use the tool, what have you done? What have you done for your people? What have you done as far as business? What have you done as far as Pan-Africanism? Before you judge, before you judge and talk, before you judge and talk about what other people are doing, what are you doing? Show and tell. So what is Brandon doing in Kenya as a supposed business owner on 100 acres of land that would give him a footing to talk about anybody else's project? What is he doing? He should show and tell. Has he planted any grapes? I mean, has he planted any oranges? Has his group planted any oranges? And then the bigger, JT the bigger figure, right? JT the bigger figure, he was in Kenya and, and a few other people went to Kenya and come to find out, you actually can't buy land in Kenya, right? Somebody, I think somebody in Kenya has to own the land. So it's not like Nigeria, like I own my land. I'm a real own, land owner as me, filed by the court in Nigeria. I own the land. In Kenya, as an African-American, you can't just go and buy land. You can't just own land. Somebody else has to own the land. I don't think you really own it. So Brandon hasn't been 100% clear in the OB, the, the, the PAO, well, I forgot what you call this thing. And every, people in Kenya purchasing land or doing things in Kenya not being 100% clear about the real process, they're not being truthful. There's no African-American, probably there's no real, I mean, I, I can't say that, but I don't think that Brandon owns 100 acres of land. I think that he's a part of a group that, 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 that group that owns via a native individual that owns a hundred acres of land. Because if you got a money for a hundred acres of land in, in, in Kenya or any place in Africa, you are not begging for super chats on the internet. <laughs> You're not, you got it like that, right? You are not saying you need money for this. You're not trying to crowdfund your plane ticket to Kenya. You're not crowdfunding your plane ticket to Africa if you're a true business owner in Africa. You're funding it yourself, right? So that gets me to question these people who call themselves Pan-African and they, they use these projects as something that they're standing on. Well, 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 talk about your project. Where are you in your project? That's why I make it a point to show you my projects. To show you, and it doesn't even have to be, oh, my project's bigger than yours. Your project's bigger than mine. Because look, I ain't shit. I'll be the first one to tell you ain't shit. And what I'm doing ain't, 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 ain't shit. Right, that's just me. But I know, you know, and, and that's how I carry it. I'm real humble about it. Because there's African Americans in Nigeria doing some amazing ass shit. I'm telling you, like there's some high, there's some upper income African Americans, some middle class African Americans in Nigeria building industry. I'm telling you, real quiet, real quiet. I'm telling you, they're all over Africa. They're not on social media because they don't got time. Everybody's not on social media. Social media only represents less than 1% of, of of the population. Any video you see on social media res represents less than 1% of a thought of views that said population for the most part, right? So, and, and then we got Dynasty Mayor, right? He's in Nigeria, right? He has a, um, he's actually, you know, at least you can see him doing something, right? You can see Dynasty, he's always on tour. You can look at his page, despite whatever you think about Dynasty Mayor, right? Whether you don't believe like his politics, whatever, you can see Dynasty Mayor doing the thing he said he was doing, right? You see him always on tour. You see him always in these countries, you know, making, I wish, no, no, he, I wish he would make more videos because I would think they would have stepped his video game advertisement up a little bit more because he's always out and about. So I just feel like he should have, a, by now he should have a crew, right? He should be on Water Maya status and, and all these because I see a lot of other uh, um, travel vloggers that's, that's their, 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 their shit done, their quality done went up. You know, and they got they are hundred thousand plus. So I think Dynas to have a hundred thousand subscribers, he should have he should be I think I believe he should be at a higher level as far as his visuals, but I mean he doing his thing. You can't say he ain't doing his thing and it's working right. And you got maximum impact, 
he's doing his thing he shows and tells you see him doing his thing yeah and you got at least you got some whether you agree with their politics you agree with their method they're literally showing you what they're doing so you can say well shit i don't like that i don't like what he said on that last live but you know what that motherfucker over there doing some shit though so i gotta give him respect you know what i'm saying that type of shit but then we got a lot of people who saying like american first rifleman right he's one of brandon's uh, premier sidekick guest on his show. He always says he's going to Africa. You know, he always holds himself to a high esteem like he's better than the rest of the black America. But how come he ain't took his high self-esteem ass to Africa yet? Why are you talking all this shit about pan-Africanism, about pro-black, and how you gonna go to Africa get him a woman? Why have he got on the plane and went, get, American First Rifleman, get your ass on the plane and go and stop talking shit to everybody else who's at least doing something. Until you start doing something, you know, nobody's ever going to take you seriously, all right? You stay over there in West, in uh, Western Port of America where ain't nothing but white folk, all right? And live in that white euphoria you live in as the, the token black guy with the big-ass mustache, all right? That's what you are. I know, kind of, I know people like, I know a lot of people like him, right? They live with white folks. They act like white folks to survive around white folks. That's just what they got to do. And that's what he does. But he ain't never, he ain't jumped to Africa yet. Cause he go to Africa, he gonna cut that fucking mustache off. I'm telling you, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna see that motherfucker with a goatee. He ain't gonna, he gonna change his name from America's first rifleman to something else. Trust me. All right, when he step on foot on Africa, right? But he need to do that. So a lot, there's a lot of these pro-black, so-called Pan-Africans that got a lot of judgment, right? They got a lot of judgment, but what are they doing themselves? What are they doing? Cause we're all watching, we're watching. And I'm watching a lot of these pro-blacks fall off. Right, I see their views are going down. They're not against much engagement because after some while, people get tired of you talking shit, man. You can only talk shit, hold people accountable for so long until it's like, all right, dog, you talking all that shit. Now what? Now what? Right? Okay, you don't told me what the issue is. What's the solution? What are you doing to solve the problem? Show me how to do it instead of talking shit. Right? Because conversations are supposed to evolve. And a lot of these people are having the same conversations, literally using the same words, same talking points, same tropes, same stereotypes, have not improved their their their, their lexicon, hasn't added any new words to their freaking to their library of, of, of words that they use to express themselves, and it's sounding like the same broken, tired, lame ass record over and over and over and over again even a hit song you get tired of hearing that shit after a while so what makes you think people want to hear people just talking shit and being negative and judging people like they like they the jesus or some shit like that and they have not shown and proved anything right like me i'm showing improving so that i can have space to talk if i wasn't doing shit i would keep my mouth shut about certain shit because i wouldn't have no space to talk but because i have qualified myself in life that's when I talk. I only talk about stuff that I've done, doing, have expertise in. I only talk about that shit. Like, if you were to meet me in real life, here's the funny thing. When people, because I, I run into people who, who watch me on YouTube, right? And if you were to meet me in real life, you would realize that I talk this way. This is how I talk. Same energy, same passion, same words, same lane. Like, like if you was my homie and we was in a car together, and we was on, I would be talking to you. Every one of my YouTube videos is just me talking regular. That's why I do it so naturally. If you ever run into anybody that ever said in life that they met me, that they know me, I 100% guarantee, I guarantee you, they will tell you that the person that they see on YouTube is the person that they see in real life. 100% energy and all, everything. I don't care if you six foot seven, 400 pound muscle. I'm gonna talk to you with the same energy that I'm talking to you right now because I put your big six foot full muscle ass on the ground and I put you to sleep and you'll never know what happened because I ain't scared of nothing. I got technique. I got skill. I'm a trained kid. Like none of that shit intimidates me, right? But I'm also know that I'm a human being and if it's like two of you, you know, six foot eight mofos and one of y'all trained like MMA and the other one box, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I'm gonna hit y'all motherfuckers with a pipe or something. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. All right, but I ain't stupid. I'm letting you know. I may, I may act soft so I can come back the next day and pop you in the back of your goddamn head and shit with a three liter soda bottle from Save a Lot. But you know, besides that, you know, I'm be streaky, but I ain't dumb. But I'm gonna get you. But I talk. I can speak with the same energy. Straight up, that's me. 
Now, a lot of these ones on YouTube, you wonder if they talk like that in real life. You think they got the same energy they be having on these panels if all those if those people were standing in front of them on in, on, in, in a square? On, you know, because in England and America, there's certain places where people, they do all that panel talk in real life. They do it in your face. There's places where you go where people come and they stand on their soapbox. They stand on their soapbox and they say what they got to say in front of people fully prepared to deal with any consequences of the for, for the actions or the words that come out their mouth. They ready to deal with it. It is much different when you're prepared to deal with the consequences in real time, physically, you know, when it comes to the things that you say out your mouth. Are you about that life for real or are you not? Are you willing to go down on your shield or are you not? You know what I'm saying? You know, so the internet makes a lot of brave people, a lot of people who pretend to, they, 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 they want to fake it until they make it. Like faking it until you make it seems to be like the standard issue mode of operation for all people on the internet. But me, I make it, right? And if I didn't make it, I ain't make it yet. I refuse to fake it. Because if you fake it, then you're sending a false narrative to all the people you want to follow you. You want people to, be, you want people, like for me, for instance, I want people to be regular like me, to be like, damn, if this regular ass can do it, I, my, my, my ass can do it. That's the sentiment I'm trying to create. Not, oh damn, I guess I gotta be some sort of spectacular, omnipotent, in the right place at the right time with the right everything and this super hustle, motivated mentality. I gotta have all this extra shit that a lot of these people on YouTube are presenting, right? But they really not about that. They're just presenting it. They're gonna fake it. Just like Fresh and Fit, they fade it until they made it. They faked it until they make made it, right? And then when they make it, you come to find out they was fake the whole time, right? So that's just not me. But anyway, this is just me, you know, uh, as a Pan-African pro-black uh, subscriber to other black people channel, as an observer, observing some Pan-Africans and pro-blacks and black nationalists Doing what they say they're gonna do, showing and telling, showing that they they can do the things that they're telling you you can do, right? And judging you based off what it is that they've done. They have a platform to be able to judge or to critique other people. And then you got the ones that's just faking it. They faking it and they ain't never gonna make it. And I know a lot of them who ain't never gonna make it, even though some of them think they are. Anyway, tell me what you think about this in the comment section. Do y'all feel the same way I feel? Y'all been watching like me, right? We all watch the same shit. YouTube is massive. It's like an ocean. But black to you is, is, like a, is, like, is, is like this big. So we all kind of know each other. I know y'all feeling the same way I'm feeling. Same tired old, born ass, hating ass, miserable ass people sitting in their house in their living rooms, running their mouth for two, three, four hours because they ain't got shit to contribute to society other than their judgment. <laughs> anyway, tell me what you think about the comment sections. Afro Think Tank, learn something, teach something. I'm out.